lights, camera, action. Welcome to the Scrapbook Podcast, Director's Cut. And welcome back to the Scrapbook Podcast, Director's Cut. I am your host, Jody Pratt, with my fellow host, Sunflower. And um, I have a story I need for you to help me with the title. Okay. Um, As usual. Yep. I wrote this today, and um, well, I was supposed to be working, but you know me. All right, so it takes place in 1968 in some communist, um, well, in some South American country in which there was a small communist group. I'll I'll put it like that, okay? Then we have our um, protagonist, Edgar uh, Negusta. And he's a communist. His ego, he's a big ego person. He's older. He's about 65. And um, he's a hoarder, right? Mm -hmm. And also he's a playwright. So he's he's been stuck in his house for years. 1968 um, is signified because that was a year after Che Guevara was executed in Bolivia, right? Mm-hmm. And you know Che Guevara and uh, the leader of um, the dictator of um, how should I say uh, Cuba. There was they ran together to like that a whole bunch of other people, and it's funny because everybody who ran in that group with um, the leader of Cuba at the time all died in some sort of horrific way. Mm. That was very weird. But anyway, <clears throat> so that's our pro- protagonist. That's Edgar. Negusta, right? Mm-hmm. And he had a partner. His name was Victor. Victor's a young guy. I want to say 31, 32. That he he wrote a play with, right? And this was his, like, I'm not sure if I'm saying this right, magnum opus. Mm-hmm. Like his summation of his whole life his greatest victory in writing and um one day he just couldn't find it right and since he's a hoarder he doesn't get out of the house and shit like that yeah um and one day edgar i mean um one day victor his writing partner just totally disappears and edgar was a married man he married a super super young woman uh, about 40 years his uh his junior, and her name is Gina. She's uh, 23, wow. right? And he decides to get out of the house. I want this to be like super, super dramatic. Him just shuffling around his house where papers are, newspapers are up to here, up to the ceiling. Mm-hmm. He never throws anything away, blah, 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 like that, right? And uh, he decides to go out in his in pure anxiety and anxiousness, he leaps out of the house and he starts to walk, like sh- walking, shuffling around and shit like that. Mm-hmm. And he sees that his, the theater in town is having a play. So he, and he's like, fuck it. I, I love the plays. I, you know what I mean? I wrote 40 of them. Yeah. I'm going to watch this play. And he goes and he watches the play and it's the same fucking play. That he wrote hmm. his magnum opus, that same fucking play. He's just like, he's reciting some of the dialogue. Some of it's been changed. And <clears throat> in the play that he got, um, in the play that was taken from him, mm-hmm. uh, summation of it, because it comes in to, it comes in key later on, right? And it's a sort of an anti communist play. About a um, dying dairy cow that this man has. Mm -hmm. And he's a very, very young man. And that's all that his parents left behind for him. Was a dairy cow and a jackass. And slowly the dairy cow is dying. And its milk is slowly becoming sour. And the owner makes a decision. And he chooses to butcher the cow. Right. And in his young mind that that believes in communism so much, he's going to disperse this cow among everybody. So everybody gets to share. Mm -hmm. Right. And 
the cow was so feeble and and uh, old, it couldn't walk. So he brought his jackass with him to drag him to the to the butcher, because the butcher lived so far away. He didn't want to put the butcher out. So he he's dragging this this uh, dairy cow behind this jackass, and he runs into a um, group of soldiers, right? Right. Nationalist soldiers. And um, they get into an argument, and the soldier shoots the donkey that he had. Oh. Right? Angry, but he knows he's out outmanned. Mm-hmm. He takes the L. And then he walks to the butcher and tells him, instead of just a cow, I have my jackass to, to butcher. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the butcher was like, ah, you know what I mean? Uh, I'll walk over there with you. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? So he goes over there. He walks. And the jackass and the um, dairy cow is gone. And that's the play. Right? Yeah. That's the play that he wrote. And it's very powerful, very meaningful in layers, 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 right? And he's seen it performed right before his eyes. And right on the marquee, on the fucking, you know, drawn up um, poster mm-hmm. was Victor. Victor's name on that, right? And furious. He's so fucking angry. And he just calms himself down, walks out of the play before the ending because he knows the fucking ending. And um, goes home and begins to type. And he types and he types. And he begins to type letters inviting Victor to his home for a meal. Hmm. And so anybody that was on the the name, the producer of the play, he invited as well. Right. Maybe a couple of actors and his former editor. He invites them all to dinner. Right. Mm-hmm. Only four people show up. And that's the producer, the editor, and Victor. But Victor's showing up fashionably late. He welcomes everybody. Hey, welcome. Welcome in. You know what I mean? He cleaned up his house. It looks fantastic in there and he's showing a different side of Edgar that he doesn't usually show that's warm welcoming he's ready for conversation kind of thing Mm -hmm. and he's like anticipating Victor Edgar's like um have you talking to the producer have you seen Victor did he get my invitation yes he got his invitation Uh, he should be here any minute showing up fashionably late an hour Goes past and knock on the door. Edgar opens it up. It's Victor. And behind Victor is Gina. Going back, Gina disappeared uh, around the same time Victor stopped showing up at his house to work. Mm -hmm. To write. And then later on, after he's searching himself, because he usually gets his wife to look for his stuff. Then he finds that his his shit is missing but then he's like I'm a hoarder I I might misplaced it yeah that's why it's so surprising to see the play to see what he's like yo this was stolen from me so back to the door he opens the door up it's Victor behind Victor's Gina and Gina's about five months pregnant now oh boy he's been gone for about eight months Victor's like hey Edgar and Edgar his eyes are unmoving in yeah. the brilliance that he is in. He's like, welcome, welcome. And, oh, Gina, has been such a long time. In the, when I pick up from Spanish culture, it's very underlining insults, yeah. but forward at the same time. He's like, oh, you look so beautiful. Oh, you you know what I mean? With child, you, you're, you're, you're glowing. And she's very hesitant to, to show up. To, to come in, actually. Right? And they sit down for dinner and they're talking. And and now that Edgar has them where they where he wants them, right. he starts to get more aggressive. Mm-hmm. You know, I stepped outside the house and everybody just like, oh, shit, he stepped outside the house. Like, looking at each other. He's like, oh, yeah. And um, I saw this play. You know what I mean? My jackass, my cow. Yeah. And 
It looked very familiar. And I saw your name on it, Victor. And he was like, ah, oh, yes, yes. You know, uh, says something real slick like you. That's how it kind of works sometimes, you know. Yeah. I just had a, a spurt of inspiration. And I hear that it's been sold it's sold out many, many nights. He's like, yeah, you know, plays nowadays are, you know, kind of making up bullshit, really. Yeah, trying to bide time. Yeah. And um, he's like, and then I see your beautiful, like, wife. Wife, is it? And they look at each other. He's like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, let me make a toast. I, I'll be right back. And then he goes to the refrigerator or whatever, or goes into his back room. Mm-hmm. And everybody's like shuffling, kind of like whispering, like, yo, are you trying to go? Like, yeah. Wanna... And then Victor, in his cockiness, Victor's like, well, you know, we'll have a, a drink of, you know, he always has some good wine. Then we can leave afterwards. And he comes back with his old dusty ass bottle of wine unopened he pours it and he's like ah oh, you didn't have to get the good stuff Edgar he's like eh, no problem it's something small between friends and he says toast you know what I mean to this and that and the other success yeah. and all exactly. that exactly salute everybody knocks it back and then from there the argue like the barbs start to get sharper and sharper and sharper and to the point where it goes to I want this shit all to be in Spanish by the way ooh okay yeah yeah it, yeah it goes to um the producer calling Edgar a fool for not giving the props where it's necessary and he's like, well, I know my shit when I see it. He was like, just because your name isn't on it, you're not going to just give this, this, you know what I mean? This yeah. young man his dues. You know what I mean? You guys work together, so w- what's the problem? And then they start to call him like a capitalist. Like, you just want money. Yep. I see how you're living now. That You know, the rats are in the walls and shit like that. And it stinks in here. And you just want a piece of the money. That's all you want. Then he stands up again, like bangs his fucking hands on the table. One thing I will not stand for is being called something I'm not. Yeah. My mind is fleeting. I agree with that, with you on that. My home doesn't smell like what it used to be. I can hardly climb into the tub. But one thing you will not call me is something that I am not. And the producer just like, well, you know, I'm about to head on out. And then from his pocket, Edgar pulls out a 22. He was like, sit the fuck down. We're going to, you know, hash this out. I don't want your money. He goes on and shit like that. I want you to admit that you t- you took this from me. Right. My mind is fleeting, yes. My tremors are getting bad every day. I can hardly stand some days. But I need to see you say that this was mine and you stole this from me. And the producer's like, I don't have to tell you. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not the one that's supposed to... Bow! Shoots him right in his chest. Mm. And he goes to Victor. You're right. He was right. You. You need to admit to me. Whatever, however this goes, I can write this a different way. Mm -hmm. Me, personally, Joseph. Yes. But this is a kind of angst I want to to be played forward. And um, Everybody's like shook. And he's like, everybody's fucking hands on the table because some people, this this is 68 in South America. Somebody's strapped. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then he points to the editor and Gina makes a run for it. 
foot like so fucking fast hits the corner. He aims at her. Bow, bow. Miss hit. There's some blood on the fucking wall. Wow. And she opens the front door and you can hear her do, 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 down the stairs. Mm-hmm. And um, the editor now is sweating. He's like, fuck, I got it. It's, it's coming. It's coming to me. And by now, the producer is finally dead. He, he was writhing a little bit. And now he was choking over the speeches that were said. And then he goes, um, Edgar goes and Edgar goes and points to the editor. He's like, go ahead. You can leave. I have to talk to him. And Victor and him have this conversation. And uh, to some point, he's not screaming, but he's he's going into such dramatic dialogue about uh, of lines in the play. Like he just remembered, like he just wrote it himself. Yeah. And he's just like, da, 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 like to the, you know what I mean? These monologues that are in the play that the that the young boy has uh, as he's seen his donkey, his jackass die before him. As he's walking to the butcher and pleading to and begging him to come here, I'll give you an extra cut of meat. Yeah. But they're dead now. And he walks back in the monologue that he has as he's staring at these giant divots in the mud in which where his animals were. That's all that he had left of his parents and that they're gone now. And the belief of communism that drove him to being such a giving person, you know, equal share type of shit. Right. And now that is gone. He's saying all these monologues and shit, Edgar is. And Victor's just like, you know, what the what am I supposed to tell you, dude? Yeah. I thought any day now you're going to die. You haven't the time nor the energy to give people what they need. Mm. And it's like, how the fuck are you going to tell? What you put your name on, that was me. That was all that I had left. For that young boy, that's all that he had left. And he gave it his all and it got stolen. Yeah. And Edgar's like, um, he says, um, must you take all that I am? Without me, you would be a fragment of a wall in a bleak room surrounded by a group of applauding dwarfs. That is your life without me. If I didn't allow you into my home, that is you. And they stare at each other. Stare, stare. And Edgar just, bah! Pops him around his hand. I, you will never write again mm-hmm. if I have anything to do with it. And then, policia! And Edgar just, like, smiles at Victor. And lights his fucking long-ass cigarette. Starts to puff. Or, or a, um... Super chewed up ass uh, cigar. Mm-hmm. I think that'd be pretty fitting. Yeah, that's yeah. Cleans up his glasses and shit. Tucks in his button up that he was wearing. Strings up his suspenders. Sits down at the table with his with the gun on his um, on the table as well. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, uh, you know, policia come in and. It's the military. So right about now, it's martial law mm-hmm. in the South American country. And it's not just the police. It's the military police, by the way. I'm just adding that in. Yes. And they come in and like dr- hell and niggas come in there. And he pops at him. Edgar does. And they just light up the whole place. Yep. <laughs> You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And for him, it was a. Out of this, I'm not going to I'm not going to get satisfaction out of this. I'm not. And I want it to be a sour ending. I want it to be. Unsettling. I want it to be just unhappy at the end. Yeah. Because you never get it. 
you never get what you want at the end. But he knows that that man who stole from me, mm-hmm. I'll, that wrong is is right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even if he goes after this, he goes and his name is applauded and some psychopath killed him and this is the greatest play ever. He knows in his heart that he wrote that play. Right. And everybody in that room knows that he wrote that play. Mm-hmm. And it'll be given to him. But it's going to be a not so sweet kind of ending. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, that's that's what the fuck I have. How do you like that? That was very thought out. Even, even, so it was funny because when you were, <laughs> I think it's pretty funny, when you were talking about the play. Uh-huh. It literally brought me into the play, and I forgot that that's not the story. Yeah, that's I know, the play. Right? <laughs> and so when you were saying yeah, and then you segued into back into it, and I was like, wait, all yeah, right, exactly. Because right. he's okay. sitting. Because when we're in, the, w- w- what I'm going to have right, he's going to be sitting in the playhouse watching the play, and that's what we're going to see. You know what I mean? It's going to take us out of the third person and into a first person play. And then back into a third person point of view. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's why it kind of, that's why I was kind of keep saying monologue and monologue, how you say it. Yeah. And that's what Edgar's going to be saying is those lengthy monologues that he was, that the young man with the jackass and the cow was saying. Yeah. Yeah. Should it be a different ending on that? No, I think you should keep it uh, unhappy or unpleasant. Yeah. Um, it makes more sense that way because not every good anything has a good ending all the time. Yeah, true. You know, so why not, you know? I wouldn't I wouldn't change anything. Um, I have three or four titles I thought of throughout the entire thing. Uh-huh. Um, one of them being Ghost Rider. Mm-hmm. Or Ghost Rider's Revenge, which is super cheesy. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Um uh the donkey and the cow and then i was i stopped there and i was like wait a minute hold on he said something the jackass and the cow Mm, yeah and then you said it multiple times so it only makes sense you know what i mean yeah that's very true and it's like it ties in a lot like you you get this different image and it's like the jackass and the cow like what the hell is this about yeah and then you have you get it get it yeah. When you watch true. it or listen to it. And so, some of these um, things that I've written, I, I kind of want to do a audio yeah. version of it mm-hmm. instead of a, you know what I mean? Instead of a little like play, I would love to do like an audio version and do like acting and shit. Like, You're good at it. Yeah, I mean, no, not me. I mean, no, other no niggas, you you have that, to do it. Yeah, you have to at least be narrator because you got that sexy ass sultry voice. Yeah, and when then I'm sick, I'm, I sound good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but um, you can be like definite narrator because I we've been watching a lot of well, not a lot, but Wes Anderson. Yeah, you know bro. the background audio of yeah. the of the narrator things like that, and it's just telling a story. I feel like that would be you in yeah. a sense, and I feel like this story could be it as well. Um, I don't know if he's ever done any films or anything that, in a different language, but that kind of fits pretty cool. I can see the the whole pan out everything and maybe like a more dingier color, but still vibrant, you yeah, know? I agree. Yeah. Um, all right, bet. Cool. I like that shit. Some, some small, some sweet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some, has a lot in it. It packed a punch. Yeah, I, I think this might be my first novella. Okay. If I remember this shit. I think you should. Yeah, I, yeah. I'll remember I, some of I it, think hopefully. This will be the, I, I, you know, I'm in the, my short stories right now, mm-hmm. but I think this might be the my first novella. It's, it's like I said, it packs, it packs a lot. Yeah. And it tells a lot. And it doesn't matter how long or short things are, it, it packed a lot of things that I wouldn't have even imagined. Like you, and then you were telling me earlier. Yeah, you know, you when I give it when I, when I sit in front of the mic, I, I kind of, you know. But I, but it, it, but I'm glad that it made sense. Yeah. Because I was sitting there like I'm really confused, 
And then t- just now when you're doing all of, when we're doing all of this, it was just like, yeah, no, this is, it makes complete entire sense. And then I love the use of a uh, Gina yeah. and then her having such a small, but like pivotal role. Yeah. And I'm like, the bitch is pregnant. You fuck out of here. You yeah, know what I mean? Like real, you, you low key hate her. And she don't say anything. Yeah, and and, uh, and then you feel it. You yeah. kind of feel that when he Tension. opens the door and you see Victor. Yeah. And Victor's not a bad looking guy. He's a very handsome. And he's younger. A bit darker skin, nice full beard. Everybody's a part of the Communist Party, by the way. Yeah. Right? Except for except for Edgar. He's changed his ways. He doesn't believe in that. And that's what reflected in the play. You know what I mean? And before, it's kind of like before he saw his ending, he wrote the ending. Yeah. All yeah. that was taken from him. Everything that he had left was taken from him. Dude, yeah. The, the yeah, correlation exactly, there. Exactly, That bro. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. The the animals were taken from, you know, him. Man, yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. So, technically, the jackass. Then, the, then there you go. The jackass and the cow. Yeah. Exactly. Right there. Man. Boom, pal. How you like me now? I'm Jody Pratt, my fellow host. Sunflower. And that was the Jackass and the Cow. Um, this is the Scrapbook Podcast, Director's Cut. We love you. Don't stop being creative. We are the Scrapbook Podcast everywhere. The Scrapbook Podcast at gmail.com. The Scrapbook Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, Wherever you search us, we're on that. Except for YouTube, we're going to get that shit up soon. Um, But we love you. Don't stop being creative. Peace. Bye.